started. Okay. Welcome, everyone. This is a presentation about the honors program for admitted students to the University of Colorado. Uh, the honors program was created by the College of Arts and Sciences in 1926 as one of the first honors programs in the nation. And in 1945, since then, graduation with Latin honors in arts and sciences has involved the undergraduate research projects and honors thesis process we'll be talking about uh, shortly. So uh, Yasmin, uh, next slide. Yes, okay, so today's speakers, that's, I'm Paul Beal, well, let's go back. I'm Paul Beal, I'm the uh, professor of physics and I'm the interim director of the honors program. Jenny? I'm Jenny Schwartz. I'm a clinical psychologist and also instru an instructor in the honors program. And Christy. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Christina Sue, and I'm the director of the Honors Residential Academic Program. Okay. So the other people on the panel here, uh, we'll introduce those quickly. Jason? Hello. I'm the director of recruitment for the College of Arts and Sciences. Yasmin? Hi, everyone. My name is Yasmin Martinez. I'm one of the undergraduate student recruitment coordinators, also for the College of Arts and Sciences. Zinni? Zenny is picking up his child, but will join us a little bit later. Okay. David? Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm the scholarship coordinator and analyst for the College of Arts and Sciences. Janelle? Hi, everyone. Glad to have you here today. I'm the honors program manager. Carmen? Hi, I'm Carmen Jura, the honors wrap coordinator. And Mackenzie? Hi, I'm Mackenzie. I'm an honor student, uh, junior, double majoring in atmospheric and oceanic sciences and physical geography. Okay, next. Yasmin, there we go. Okay, so, so first of all, congratulations on your admission into the University of Colorado College of Arts and Sciences and your invitation to participate in the Arts and Sciences Honors Program during your first year here at CU. After your first year, all CU students from any college who maintain a 3.3 GPA or above may participate in the honors program, whether or not they were invited, like each of you were. Unlike some honors colleges at other universities, we've made a conscious decision to not separate the honors students from everyone else on campus. Rather, we want you to participate in our classes and programs while also enriching your other classes and academic activities with your passion for education, skills, and success. Let's look on the screen. Good. Uh, back. Okay. There are many ways for you to participate in honors and personalize your engagement to best meet your academic goals. The University of Colorado is a world-class research university that values undergraduate education and engages undergraduates in our research, scholarship, and creative work. The honors program is central to that. Abby. Oh, you want me to go? Yeah, you're next. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So... Our honors program has been a, around a long time, as Dr. Beal has said. Um, I have made, personally, I've been teaching here at the university uh, in the Department of Psychology for almost 20 years and recently made a decision to move to the honors program. And that is really because though I'm a clinical psychologist, I like, I'm trained to do research and to be a therapist. The thing I have discovered I really love the most is teaching. And so like the rest of my colleagues in the honors program, we are, I don't, I don't know if I personally am talented or innovative, but I am definitely committed to, uh, to making the undergraduate experience um, one that is challenging intellectually, academically, personally, socially. It's, it's what I love to do most to make that happen. So we really do see this program as a way to enrich your experience so you can get the most out of your uh, college uh, years as possible. And also to help, you know, you can bring what you, you're all, you know, incredibly talented, interested, engaged, and we hope that you will bring a lot to our community as Dr. Beal has said. So I'll tell you a little bit about the offerings that we have if we move on to the next slide. 
So as I mentioned, I mean, I think one of the main reasons that I uh, am here in the honors program, why I've chosen to be here is because of the honors courses. And uh, after this, you can take a look at the website that we have. You can see all the courses we'll be offering next year. You'll see that there's a really wide range um, in terms of science, math, humanity, psychology. Um, you'll see that there's quite a range in terms of from the introductory level all the way up to more advanced, you know, junior, senior, upper division courses. But the one thing that they all have in common is that they are limited to 17 students. So I'll just speak from my experience. When I, I one of the classes I teach in the honors program is the introductory psychology class. Um, we call it general psychology here at CU. Across the country, intro psych is probably one of the most popular biggest classes at any university. It definitely is here at CU. It's always one of the top three in terms of size and popularity here. When I teach it in the psychology department, it has about 400 students. And when I teach it here, it has 17. So I think, you know, you can um, guess what the differences are in the learning experience there. Obviously, we're able to, and we sit around a table when we are in person, which we hope to be in the fall. Um, we engage with each other in a more deep way with the material in our discussions. We engage with each other. It's a great way to, to, to really engage personally, as I said, and socially with the material. In addition to our classes, there's a lot of other things that the program offers and you can sort of pick and choose, you know, do you want to take an honors uh, class? Do you want to be involved in any of these other sort of co-curricular, extracurricular activities we have? I'll talk about a few of them. Starting at the top there, the community events. Um, though I really wanted to, to teach in the honors program because of the courses, I have really fallen in love with the, the community events. Um, there are so many offered. It's such a nice way to get to know other faculty and students who are engaged and interested. The events are frequent. They range from sort of very informal coffee, you know, coffee hours, um, social interactions, all the way to more formal. Um, some of the less formal ones that are popular are um, TV with a prof. So that is where we might get together and watch a television show and then a professor will talk about that show from their discipline or their area of expertise. Um, I'm not really a TV person, but students last semester, uh, I said I would do it if someone would come up with a show for me. And they chose the show um, Grace and Frankie, which I didn't know what it was, but when I watched it, I was so surprised because it's about older adults. So, but they wanted to talk about um, ageism. So we did do that. I think I surprised them a little bit because although, um, certainly there's lots of material to think about the ways that people have um, prejudicial attitudes towards older adults in our society and that captured well in that show. Plenty of prejudicial attitudes against younger adults as well. So your age group, we did a lot of talking about that. We have um, Psy Talks. Dr. Beale gave one not too long ago about the Big Bang. Um, we have a formal talk happening tonight, part of the Distinguished Lecture Series by Dr. Keasley, who's teaching, um, I think, or speaking on the topic, Lessons for Intergroup Contact Theory, Odyssey of an African-American University Professional. So lots of different of these community events that you can choose to go to. It's a nice way to get to know other students, other faculty, to flex your intellectual muscles kind of outside the classroom and just to have fun. We have the Honors Journal, which is um, a journal that's published every year by the Honors Program. It's run by students in the Honors Program. Uh, students throughout the undergraduate community at the university can submit pieces of writing that include fiction, nonfiction, uh, and it's a beautiful publication each year. If you're interested, you can check it out, the online version on our website, all the way up to something like the Honors Scholars Program, which is an opportunity to get more involved really in the Honors Program uh, because it is a way to, to graduate 
with an achievement, an honor scholar. You can put that on a resume. And it really documents that you have participated in a certain number of honors courses, a certain number of events. You've um, given some time to donate, to volunteer in the community. And it's a, real, it's a way to meet and really get involved with other honors students and to participate more deeply in the program. Um, without writing an honors thesis. Writing an honors thesis and graduating with Latin honors is another way that a, a number of our honors students get involved. And I'll let Dr. Beal give it back to you so you can tell, talk a little bit more about that. Okay, next slide, Yasmin. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about the Latin honors process. So in order to graduate with Latin honors in the College of Arts and Sciences, a student needs to conduct an extensive piece of research, scholarship, or creative work under the mentorship of a member of our faculty. Now, the projects usually start around junior year, sometimes earlier. Every department in arts and sciences has a departmental honors program. and They can assist you in your major in finding a faculty mentor, mentor getting started, choosing a thesis topic, engaging in research, scholarship, or creative work that will lead to your thesis. Uh, general honors is available to students who want to write and defend an interdisciplinary thesis that is well outside of their major. Often your thesis uh, leads to a publication with you as a co-author or first author. And um, uh, so when you write a thesis, you describe your academic discoveries in the thesis. So for example, if you do research in physics, biochemistry, political science, or sociology, that research and what you discovered goes into your thesis and you describe that in an academic uh, setting. Uh, you could do a thesis involving scholarship in English, Asian language and civilizations, history, for example. Or you could do a creative work project in theater, dance, studio art, or creative writing. And what you do is with your thesis, you write a thesis and then you present that thesis uh, to a three or four member faculty honors uh, uh, committee that you choose. And your committee makes a recommendation to the honors council, a 50 member faculty committee that represents every department in the college. They make the final decision on the level of Latin honors, cum laude, magna cum laude, or summa cum laude, based on the quality of your thesis project, your written thesis and defense and your overall academic record. And then finally, the honors program presents the Latin honors graduations at a uh, ceremony at the end of each semester called the honors convocation where we celebrate the uh, academic accomplishments of our students. Uh, only about uh, four to 7% of the graduating class uh, graduate with Latin honors. So it is uh, quite an accomplishment uh, and demonstrates that you are among the best and the brightest of our uh, students at the university. Uh, next one, Yasmin. Okay, so a few quick points. So you are not required, having been invited in the program, you're not required to participate in any specific part of the program, but you are uh, eligible to participate in all of them. So uh, you can take our classes, uh, attend our seminars, attend our community events, uh, participate. You can in, uh, apply to uh, live in the honors residential pro program we'll talk about later. Uh, none of those are required. Um, you do not need to accept your invitation, having applied to CU and uh, been accepted into CU. And if you accept the uh, uh, offer to come to see you, you are a participant in the honors program. And to continue in the honors program, you need to maintain an eligibility of, to, to maintain your eligibility, you need to maintain a 3.3 GPA or higher. Uh, and that applies to any student, whether you were invited as you were or not. Uh, next. Okay, Dr. Sue is gonna talk about residential academic programs. Yeah, thanks, Paul. And again, welcome, everybody. Um, I'm the director of the Honors Residential Academic Program, and I'll talk to you a little bit about our um, the options that you have in terms of, of living. And I just want to start out saying that, you know, as faculty, I'm, I'm faculty in the Department of Sociology, but as faculty, we oftentimes, um, you know, assume or maybe we don't care to admit that, you know, taking your classes or the academics um, 
is the entire reason you come to a university and encapsulates your, your entire experience, but we know it's just a slice or a part of your identity. And certainly there's another really important point of um, going to college and that is you know, building a community, making friends, and that's the social component. And so a large part of the social component, especially for first year students who are living on campus and have kind of a, a integrated living learning community situation is that um, it's of primary importance. So, so you should really think carefully about the residential options that you have as honors students and where you would like to live and where you believe that you fit the best. Um, so before I delve into the residential academic programs, um, it's important to know that the honors qualified students have a wide array of choices when it comes to living options. You can be part of a traditional living experience, a living learning community, which has, you know, kind of a similar theme in the building, or a residential academic program, which we refer to as RAPS. And these combine shared academic interests and a residential living experience. So just so that you know, honors qualified students are well represented across all of these community types. And again, as an honors student, um, you'll have, you know, you, you really have a lot of options available to you. Um, as you can see here, uh, some of the residential academic program options within the College of Arts and Sciences are the Natural Sciences and Environment Wrap, the Global Studies Wrap, the Health Professions Wrap, the Creative Minds Wrap, the Philosophy, Arts and Culture Wrap, the Story and Societies Wrap, and last but certainly not least is the option of living in the Honors Wrap, which again I direct. So all students living in the honors wrap are honors qualified and the wrap is restricted to students in the College of Arts and Sciences. And students who really thrive in the honors wrap are those who are looking for um, a serious academic environment. I mean, there's kind of a shared culture of um, you know, respecting the fact that the people are very focused on their, their academics, but also the fact that, you know, they, they like to um, be social as well. So um, establishing those, those bonds and those communities within the RAP, but it's also very interdisciplinary in focus. So if you are really interested in, you know, being in a residential, residential academic program where your roommate or people that you take classes with um, within the RAP, the people that you're, you know, kind of passing in the halls that you're engaging with socially in your residence hall are from um, a different, you know, major and discipline and background than you are, right? We have really good representation across the natural sciences, the um, social sciences, and the arts and humanities. So people who really like that kind of environment, they, they want to, you know, kind of really experience people um, and hear their perspectives from different majors are well suited for the honors wrap. Um, students in our wrap enjoy um, small seminar style classes, just like um, Dr. Schwartz was talking about with fellow honors students. So it's, it's only honors qualified students who are taking those, those classes and only ones who are members of the honors wrap. And they work closely with honors faculty. But importantly, you do not need to live in the honors wrap to participate in the honors program. In fact, the majority of um, incoming honors students do not live in the in honors wrap. So it's an option, but it's certainly um, not the only way that you can participate in the honors program. Many of the experiences that I just described, as you can see here, are not ex exclusive to the honors wrap. All wraps offer a, su a supportive and inclusive co-educational community designed around common academic themes the opportunity to surround yourself with students who generally share your academic interests and are from the same college or major. And this is RAP specific, but that's, um, that's a general theme. And they allow you to enjoy activities and small seminar style classes and work closely with RAP faculty who specialize in a first year um, experience. In, in honors RAP, our faculty specialize in teaching honors students in particular and first year students, but across all of the RAP the RAPs, the faculty really specialize in working um, closely, helping students make that transition from high school to college. And if you're interested in hearing more about the other RAPs, um, the RAPs will have booths at the Admitted Students Day Fair this Saturday. So you can pop in and out of all our booths and, and ask us different questions about our particular RAPs. And I think I'm turning it back over to um, Dr. Beal. Okay, so this is the way you can contact us. 
uh, email to honors at colorado.edu, uh, that phone number. Uh, our website has most of the answers to your questions. We'll be going through the chat and looking for other questions uh, following uh, right now. Uh, and uh, please use your colorado.edu email address to verify uh, your identity when you're asking questions because that'll tell us that you're, you know, you're coming to see you and, uh, and we can be, be able to help you better and faster. So uh, let's see, so questions. So first of all, let me say a few things because I've seen a few common questions and uh, uh, some were about uh, the residential academic programs uh, and the honors residential academic program. So all of the residential academic programs offered the small class environments as do the honors courses. So if you're in the honors residential academic program, you will take one honors course each semester through uh, HRAP. And if you're in, in one of the other residential academic programs, you would take one small class in that residential program each semester, but you're still eligible to take honors classes through the honors program. So you can take one class each semester uh, uh, based on your invitation to the honors program this year. And if you maintain that, that 3.3 GPA, uh, then you may take uh, one honors class every semester uh, at, at CU. Although very few students continue to take an honors class every single semester. It's usually the first semester or two or three that they take an honors class and maybe again in their senior year. Uh, uh, so uh, the honors is available to you, honors programs available to you during your entire uh, career. Uh, the link to the distinguished uh, scholar uh, talk tonight by Alphonse Keasley is in the chat. Encourage you to uh, come to that. Alphonse is quite a great uh, uh, speaker. Um, let's see. So, uh, yes, and you can help me too with uh, questions that you saw, but, uh, uh, one question was, how do you apply to the honors program? And you don't need to apply to the honors program. The fact that you were invited to this uh, meeting tonight means that you were invited to the honors program already. So there's no separate application, uh, necessary. You've already been invited, uh, after the first year maintaining a 3.3 GPA makes you eligible to continue to participate in the honors uh, program uh, courses and uh, the honors thesis uh, process. Uh, there's a question about getting into the honors residential program. Uh, Christy, you want to uh, mention that one again? How does a student actually apply to HRAP? Sure, absolutely. If you, if you want to check the chat, Carmen responded to this, but it's part of the housing application. So what you would do is um, if, if Smith and HREP is your first choice, just make sure to note that, um, that drop down when you are filling out your housing application. It's uh, just a note, it's not automatic this year. So the housing is collecting all of the requests for all of the residential programs and the other first year experience programs and uh, we'll be sorting people into those in a, a sort of a lottery basis. But uh, most of the people who uh, will get their first or second choice in the uh, wraps, we're, we're hoping. Uh, so we're, uh, this is a new process for us of doing it by that means, but uh, we're hoping to get you into something that you'll be very happy with. There was a question about how many honors students are invited. It's uh, 1,200 to 1,600 of you were invited of the uh, people who were admitted this, uh, this year, and that's roughly a quarter of the entering class. So it's the, your top group of students with the uh, best academic qualifications across all fields in, uh, in arts and sciences. Uh, here's one I like. Are there any future career benefits to being part of the honors program? And the answer is absolutely. Particularly, uh, the honors classes are very helpful, and the... Uh, uh, learning to think like a uh, scholar is very helpful and writing an honors thesis is extremely helpful whether you're intending to uh, uh, get a job after graduation or go to graduate school. Having uh, the research or scholarship experience and then having a faculty mentor uh, write a letter for you, that is very helpful in, uh, in that first uh, career step after uh, graduating from CU. Uh, so people, let's see, so how hard is it to get into the honors classes? Well, they tend to fill, but they don't way, way, way overfill. So uh, Jenny's class of 17, if someone's asking, it's like, I'd like to take Jenny's class rather than a class of 200 in, uh, in psychology. You just got to uh, get in there and uh, 
when orientation happens, you will have an opportunity to register for your classes, including your honors classes. So go to the honors.colorado.edu website to see how that's done. Looking for some questions that I can pass along so I'm not uh, clogging up the uh, answering here. Yeah, I could go ahead and help out. Um, okay. So does the honors program help students find research opportunities and in summer internships? Okay, well, I guess I could take that one. <laughs> the answer is yes. Each uh, department has an honors, uh, res honors uh, member of the uh, honors council and they help students uh, find research scholarship and creative work opportunities within their department. So they help uh, uh, connect you with a mentor and, and the research program and the mentor's job is to help you get involved in your research program. Uh, usually that involves research on campus and, uh, but they're also internship programs. Those are uh, uh, also possible, but not the most common way of doing an honors thesis. Usually the honors thesis is done, done with a research or a creative work project with a member of the faculty. Great. Um, the next question can be for either Carmen or Christy. If I find a roommate not in the honors program, can they room with me in the honors dorm or would I have to room with them in a different dorm? Um, so only students who are um, honors eligible are allowed to live in the honors dorm. So, um, so they would, everybody would need to be eligible to apply for HRAP, um, meaning that they're honors qualified to live in HRAP. And I was gonna add <clears throat> that, um, and I'm not sure you can hear me. This is Carmen with the honors wrap again. I also believe the housing roommate process is done fairly late in the summer, like July midsummer, but late in the overall process. So I think everyone assigned to a building then can choose roommates from that set. I could, I could be wrong, but I think that uh, the roommate selection is done last. Great, thank you. Um, either for Jason or Zenny, what is the difference between a BA and a BS? Why is neuroscience listed as a BA? What does this mean? Uh, it you know, BABS really has to do with the, uh, my understanding is the formation of the unit and university and some schools, um, it's a BS, some schools it's a BA, it's a research base. Um, and please, Paul, Janelle, anyone, if you feel uh, more on the answer, let me know. I can jump in on that. So yeah, every, ahead, every, every degree in the College of Arts and Sciences either is either a Bachelor of Arts degree or a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree. So uh, and that's not uncommon uh, when, you, when you're in uh, uh, the uh, uh, Arts and Sciences College at many, many universities, Bachelor of Arts is the degree. Uh, at CU, the uh, degrees in the professional programs, engineering and business are, are Bachelor of Science uh, degrees. So it's basically which college are you in? Uh, so in terms of is there any difference between a BA and a BS in terms of applying to graduate school? And the answer is no, our, right, our student, in fact, physics has a degree in engineering here at CU and also in arts and sciences at CU. And uh, the engineering ones earn a bachelor of science. The, the ones in arts and sciences earn a bachelor of arts. The two physics uh, degrees are identical in every way. They take the same courses at the same time with the same professors. So. Uh, and their placement into graduate programs and in uh, uh, jobs after uh, graduation are pretty much identical. Great, thank you. And we have some questions that are very similar, but is it possible to, make, to take more than one honors course per semester? Can all of your classes be honors? Now we do limit it to one honors class uh, per semester so that, uh, and you don't really want every single one of your classes to be an honors class and it wouldn't meet your academic goals because they are generally spread. Most of the students take the honors class to meet an arts and sciences general education requirement. So all of our classes are designed to meet a general ed requirement. If you happen to see one in your major, that would be great. But uh, typically, the courses you take in honors are not the ones you would take in your own major. Great. Thank you, Paul. Another question. Is there any added benefit to being in the honors program if a student wants to go into law school or medical school? 
again, absolutely, it shows that you were the, amongst the best and the brightest and you went beyond just uh, being a great student in your classes, that you did a research or piece of scholarship that distinguished you. Uh, and uh, every graduate school program looks to see that some things that make you special that they want to make your off an offer to you to be in their graduate program. Great. Next question, when do you enroll in classes and will there be advisors to aid in the process? Uh, Janelle, you want to take that one? I'm so sorry. I was answering something in the chat. Can you read it? <laughs> no worries, Janelle. I can answer that okay. one as far as the new student welcome process will begin in May. So about mid-May, because May 1 is the national intent deadline. And so after May 1 is when we'll start moving forward with any of those processes. But you'll be invited to complete your uh, new student online experience, um, that welcome experience. And then from there, that's going to show you how to register for courses. And then there will be invitations to join um, some different registration uh, tutorials, advising uh, meetings, and things like that. And yes, we will support you wholly through the registration process. Janelle had put something in the chat that I want to call out that is very important. There is a large number of students registering as incoming students. Remember that during each registration window though, there is a certain amount of courses that are held. So it's not like, oh man, I'm not registering until that second you know, wave. I'm not gonna get any of the classes I want. That's not true because we're making it so that there is equal opportunity for first year incoming students to be able to sign up for the courses that they want to. So you have equal chance uh, opportunity, no matter what your registration window is. Great, thanks, Zenny. Yeah. Another question, are there any study abroad benefits from the honors program? Can honors classes be taken abroad? Uh, the honors classes are all taught here on campus, so you can't take an, a CU honors class uh, from uh, elsewhere. Uh, and most of uh, the study abroad program, we have a uh, uh, study abroad office that will help you uh, organize being in a study abroad program and your major uh, advisors can help you with that. So that's usually done through your major advisor and the study abroad office. Thanks, Paul. I have a couple of similar questions again, uh, maybe for Carmen or Christy. Um, is getting placed in the HRAP first come first serve? So um, I can take that. So it's not first comes first serve. It's um, basically after the housing window application closes, it's, it's a lottery system. And so that's the case with all of the wraps with the exception of um, within the lottery system, only people who are honors qualified will be part of that lottery for the honors wrap. Great, right. and then maybe you can also clarify this comment. Um, since we were invited to live in Smith Hall, is there any reason we wouldn't be able to live in Smith if we chose it as our first choice on the housing application? Yeah, so great question. So, um, you know, you heard the, the numbers, it all kind of depends of, you know, how many people are coming to see you. Um, in Smith Hall, we have over 330 beds, so that gives you some sense of our capacity. Um, it is competitive, but again, all, all students don't choose, um, you know, Smith Hall is their first priority if they're honor students. There's a lot of honor students in health professions wrap, in the natural sciences and environment wrap, and, and kind of across the different wraps. So, um, you know, each year the, the demand and supply is different, but, um, you know, we can never guarantee a spot. It's just, I would just encourage you, um, even though it's a lottery system, to, to be sure to, to sign up and fill out your, your housing application early. Great, thank you. Are the honors courses worth more credit hours than typical general education classes? Jenny? No, they're not. Um, I was gonna, I also saw another question which was about like, are the honors courses more difficult than the regular classes? And I thought I could, I could respond to that, but maybe Mackenzie, you can say from your perspective first and then I could add to that. Yeah, so, so far I've taken three honors courses. I took two when I lived in HRAP my freshman year. I took an Environment Society Geography course with Dr. Abby Hickox. Um, it was a great class, definitely a lot more challenging with more critical thinking. And then I took Calculus Two with Dr. Ilya Mishev. And that one was followed more along just the math department guidelines. So it was like 
similar, just a smaller class size, which I really liked since that class was every day. And then right now I'm taking an honors advanced writing workshop with Dr. Andrea Feldman. And that's basically writing my thesis. So pretty challenging, yes. <laughs> That's a great answer because it sounds like it's varied a little bit for you. Yeah, I, I think when I teach them, I wouldn't say they're more difficult. You know, when I teach, for example, introductory psychology, it's not more difficult in the honors program, but it is different. You know, there is more critical thinking. There's more opportunity for reading primary sources. Um, it's a different kind of course. You know, there's more opportunity to show learning other than through, for example, multiple choice exams. I think, you know, when you take the 400 person class, it's difficult. Those are hard exams. I write hard exams, um, but it's just a different way of, of learning and showing what you know, I think, in the smaller classes. Great. Thank you. Our next question, if I was accepted into the honors program for one major, am I still allowed to change my major? Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. So your, your uh, in, invitation to the honors program had nothing to do with your anticipated major. Uh, so you could have been choosing open option or you can change majors. Uh, in fact, about half of all students uh, at some point in their career switch their majors. So perfectly fine to switch majors. That has no effect on your ability to take honors classes either your first year or later. Yeah, I'll just add to that. The key is that you stay within the College of Arts and Sciences. If you switched your major to engineering, for example, then you would want to look into their honors program instead. Great, thank you. And Janelle, I don't know if you have data on this question, but do you think that honors program students have better outcomes in terms of graduate school, better jobs than non-honor students? We're actually working on uh, that data now. We don't have it available yet, but we are in the process of coming up with that. So I apologize, I don't have it available today. Well, my, mine is not uh, across all honors uh, uh, departments, but I know in physics, we uh, about 25% of our students uh, do honors uh, thesis and graduate with Latin honors. Someone asked a question, do you have to do an honors thesis? And the answer is no, it's only if you are interested in graduating with Latin honors. Uh, so there, uh, that's the, someone was saying to graduate with honors. Well, that means to graduate with Latin honors, you have to do a thesis in College of Arts and Sciences. Uh, in physics, pretty much uh, every student who completes an honors thesis in physics and wants to go to graduate school gets into a good graduate school. So, uh, I, the, uh, the data I've seen is like doing that is a sign that you are a certainly graduate school qualified, whether you choose to go to graduate school or not. Uh, the thesis is a big leg up in terms of getting into a good graduate program. Yeah, I'd say the opposite is also true in psychology. It's rare to go on to graduate school without having done an honors thesis, for example. Right. In my department, when we're selecting students to be admitted into our graduate program, if they didn't do an undergraduate research project, there had to have been a really good reason why the student was not able to. They were at a very small school that didn't have that opportunity, and they didn't also have the opportunity to do a re, uh, what's called an REU program, research experience for undergraduates. That CU, for example, runs. You can come to CU from another school and do research during the summers here. So uh, that's one of the things, particularly in the sciences, uh, that people are gonna be looking for. Well, in fact, across all of the academic fields, uh, an honors thesis or an honors uh, research project is very, very uh, helpful and often expected in terms of for a student wanting to go to graduate school. It shows you've got, you've got the right stuff. If you've done it once, you can do it again. Great, thank you. Our next question, can you be in more than one RAP program? Carmen, you want to answer that one? I'd be happy to. I was busy typing an answer to someone's chat question. Could you please repeat the verbal question? Thank yeah, you. for sure. Can you be part of, um, can you be in more than one rap? Oh, yes, I did answer that earlier. That's a great question. The answer is no. Um, but I do want to highlight that question, I think, comes from the honors perspective of wanting to participate in honors program things. And yes, you can participate in honors courses, honors social events, and honors academic activities, even if you don't live in the honors wrap. So you can live in a different wrap and be very active in the honors community and the honors program. 
It's wonderful. Thanks, Carmen. Our next question, if we choose to not take an honors course a semester, are we still eligible to take honors courses a different semester? Janelle? Uh, we're all nodding. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. So yeah, you don't have to take an honors course in any given semester. So if you choose not to take one in the fall, but you do in the spring, you are still eligible having gotten an invitation to the honors program uh, for the whole academic year. And then that would continue um, once you've passed your first year at CU, if you maintain that 3.3 GPA or higher, you can take an honors course at any point during your undergraduate career here. Thank you. How involved is the honors thesis? How many credits do you earn and how much time does it involve? Uh, the time can be a lot. You might start in your junior year. You might spend two years working on a research project and become, you know, a, a, one of the world's experts on this topic by the time you finish your thesis. And often many students, uh, their thesis is the basis for a uh, scholarly uh, research paper uh, with that uh, the faculty members will help you uh, help you draft and get submitted to a journal. Um, so it can be quite time consuming. Uh, students can either be paid to do research, so a lot of uh, uh, research labs have money to pay undergraduate research students, uh, and if uh, you're not being paid, then you can take uh, independent study credit while you're doing the honors research project. Um, and uh, some departments offer a seminar course that's a one-hour course that you get to meet with other honors students, that you hear their talks, they give presentations for their uh, uh, anticipated honors thesis talks as they're moving through the system. So you get to see what an honors thesis talk it looks like and the kind of questions that will get asked during the, during the talk. So uh, the goal is the departments are gonna help you be an expert in your field, in your discipline. And, uh, uh, but it's very, it's, it's time consuming, but it's extremely rewarding. Great, thanks Paul. As any, maybe you can answer this question. Could someone have a minor in another college at CU and remain in the arts and sciences honors program? Yeah, yeah. And um, Janelle answered this in the chat. So if you can refer there if you want, uh, but also, uh, yes. So there are minors in other colleges. One of the great things of minors is a way to add that nuance to your degree. So if you wanna do business and you wanna do an arts and sciences major, you can do that with that 12 credit business minor. Um, very similarly within the college, there are different minors offered. So yes, you can have minors in other colleges. You can have a certificate in another college. Uh, doing a major, that's when we start talking about double degree. Um, so that would be being admissible to the College of Engineering and also admissible to the College of Arts and Sciences and you're completing both requirements for those full degrees. Um, there is also a question, Yasmin, that I saw speaking to um, med school acceptance. And while I don't have a, an exact percentage, I do know that CU Boulder has the highest acceptance rate and um, cohort going into Anschutz Med School every year. Uh, so being at CU Boulder and staying in the CU family and going to Anschutz is pretty, pretty good for you. And we have a special program for people interested in medical programs and law programs, getting you ready for the coursework and also pre literally prepping you for the, uh, uh, the interviews that you're going to have to go through. Uh, I've had students tell me after their real interview that the, phys the one that they had on campus was harder than the real interview, but they were glad they went through the uh, mock interview on campus. Great. Thank you. Uh, next question either for Christy or for Carmen. Do you have to take um, an honors course each semester to live in the honors wrap? Yeah, I'll take that. Yes, um, I mean, it, you can say have to, you could say requirement or you could say opportunity. We like to think of it as an opportunity. Again, going back to what Dr. Schwartz said about, you know, really um, those are highly coveted classes. We actually have people outside of RAPs asking if they can take RAP classes because they're, you know, so small. Um, so we offer the opportunity for everybody living in honors RAP to take 
one course um, in the fall and one course in the spring. And yes, it is a requirement. It's an important part of community building because a lot of the co-curricular and extracurricular activities um, with um, upperclassmen honor students who lead a lot of these programs and with the faculty are all kind of built into that, um, that class structure. Great question, thank you. Great, thanks. Uh, the next question, um, do you have time for other classes that you do in honors thesis? Oh, absolutely. Well, you have to be taking other classes. So you're going to have your regular 15 hours or so of classes each semester, even the semesters you're working on your honors thesis. So uh, treat that as every student should have something in addition to their uh, in-class uh, activities, you know, and an honors thesis research project, it could be one of those, but it could be something completely different. You might be involved in a student club or a student sport. Um, so every student that comes to see you, we highly recommend you do something outside the ordinary class environment, but the honors uh, research project, that's one of the most rewarding things to do. Mackenzie, did you want to talk a little bit about that as well? Uh, yeah. Um, could you just repeat the question one more time just to make sure that I answer it? Um, yeah. Uh, do you have time for other classes if you do an honors thesis? So I guess just time management with yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so I'm actually, I take a usually a pretty high course load every semester. I usually take about 18 or more. Um, plus, I'm working on an honors thesis. I've been doing undergraduate research for four semesters now. So I take it as an independent study for about three credits, which is about nine hours. Um, every week. So yeah, it's definitely possible to, you know, balance everything. You just kind of have to sort your priorities and manage your time well. Great, thank you. Our next question, how does CU address equity, inclusion, and diversity in its honors program? Is the honors program diverse? Jenny, want to uh, take a shot at that? I think it is very diverse and I, I in terms of faculty and students and I think it's a high priority that uh, topic that we cover throughout our coursework. In other words, I think it's built in to almost all of our courses. That's it's a high priority for us as a faculty to address those issues. And like I said, I think to me it's sort of built into my coursework. And I think for most of my colleagues that's true as well. And I'd also add that uh, we recently were able to change our invitation process and we are actively working to make the group of students who are admitted a much more diverse and inclusive group. So we're happy about that as well. And many of our uh, uh, community activities involve uh, uh, working with diversity and equity programs. So, uh, you know, a lot of our uh, and we have special seminars where students and faculty get together and work together on those uh, topics. I would also add the Honors Wrap offers a scholarship program for the fee that it is that is charged for Wrap participants that is based on diversity and inclusion. So if you check that out on our website, I'll put something in the chat about that. Great, thank you. Our next question, I believe this is what they're trying to say. Um, do pre-med students participate in the honors wrap? Carmen, do you want to, um, you, I, I have a response. I'll respond and then I'll let Carmen jump in, um, which is uh, most of the pre-med students um, apply for health professions wrap because it's, it's very much geared to um, students who are interested in going into the health professions. But um, Carmen works one-on-one -on -one with our students in Smith. So we'll have a, a much better kind of overall perspective of um, students' backgrounds. I got um, caught on that one too. Um, I didn't actually hear the question because I was going to do the paste into the chat. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, no worries. Um, yeah, do pre-med students participate in the honors rep? Oh yes, I answered that in the chat also, but for everyone on the phone, by coincidence, or it's certainly not planned, but we do have a lot of honor students who are interested in majoring in pre-health majors like integrated physiology or MCDB, molecular cell. 
and um, maybe they're interested in veterinary school. Uh, there's a wide range of pre-health majors. And it could be that once they meet other students on campus, they declare majors in that area. Or it could be that they were assigned and knew all along. A lot of people change their mind about their majors along the way when they go to college. In the end, we often have a very, I don't know, 25, 30% of the building has been pre-health majors, but it's coincidental, not by design. Great, thank you, Carmen. Um, our next question, can students in the honors program studying a science still participate in music clubs, groups, or minor in musical performance of some kind? I think the answer is yes, you know, so uh, being an honor student, uh, does, uh, well, being any student at CU, you're allowed to participate in all the programs that CU has to offer uh, that uh, you can be a minor in, I think there's a minor in, in music. Am I right there, Zenny or uh, Jason? Uh, I don't know that the music minor has been officially launched just yet, um, but so ensembles are open. Um, performances are typically open. And so that is something to really think about is that, um, yes, you don't necessarily have to be a major to do something uh, very, very similar to pre-med. Right, you don't have to be a biology major to go to med school. You could be an art major. You could be a philosophy major. Um, what pre-med would always tell you is choose the major of your passion and interests, because that's where you're going to be the most successful. Uh, but with any of the student clubs and organizations, as well as a lot of the performances and ensembles, you don't have to be that major necessarily. Thanks, Annie. Our next question, do honor students graduate in four years on average? Uh, I think Janelle put a note in the, in the uh, chat, but uh, about 80% of honor students, the people who maintain a 3.3 GPA graduate in four years. So it's a very high graduation rate. Uh, one of the things I do besides being uh, interim director of honors is I run a, a scholarship program called the Buffalo Bicycle Classic Scholarship. We uh, have a bicycle ride every year and we have 25 and 50 students every year uh, supported on a scholarship by that. And they have the exact same entry requirements as honor students. So, um, and their graduation rate over the last 18 years has been uh, 95%. Great, thank you. Uh, we have two very similar questions. Um, can you live in Smith Hall all four years or is it just for freshmen? Great question, thank you. Um, the honors wrap is um, like all wraps is primarily for freshmen, but in the honors wrap, we have um, a small number of leadership positions. We call them flock leaders, basically um, students. We, did, we In addition to having the larger community of 330 students in honors wrap, we then divide them um, students into smaller communities of usually 30 students. And so a returner, somebody who's lived in Smith in the past um, and is an upperclassman honor student will then kind of have a leadership role and, and do all sorts of activities and, and kind of peer mentoring and that sort of thing for those students. So if you are interested in playing a leadership role, then um, yes, you can apply to become a flock leader. And we do have some flock leaders who have been in Smith Hall for all four years. Great, thank you. Um, our next question, do you have to live on campus for two years or just your freshman year? And Zenny, you got just, that. <laughs> yeah, I was just typing in, in addition to it too. Uh, there's only a first year live on uh, requirement. and. One thing to remember too is that is something that if you live, I want to say the radius is 60 miles, but talk to housing, student housing, and they will tell you the requirements. Um, but if you're a student who's like, I'm, I'm graduating from Monarch High School and I just, I have a really great spot and I want to stay with my parents, save money that way, that is totally an option. Talk to housing. Right, so any exemptions from that live on requirement, that would be through housing, talk with them. But then you may also have that opportunity that you're like, whoa, I don't like having to pay for my housing or food. So I'm gonna live on one year and then I'm gonna become an RA, right? So you can always do that employment side of things um, and you get your room and board paid for and that can be a pretty cool deal. And there's also uh, apartments that you can live on your second year. 
Thanks, Lenny. I know we um, are close to time and I don't see any other questions. So Mackenzie, if you just wanna share your favorite memory um, from the honors program or just being a CU student in general. Yeah, um, so I probably have like two favorite memories. Um, I'm the co-chair of the honors program student advisory board. So um, I love just spending time with our group of uh, board members. We're all different majors and everything and we all have a lot of fun talking. So um, joining that was definitely great to be more involved in the honors program. So I love hanging out with all of them every week. Um, and then my other favorite memory would probably be when I lived in the honors wrap my first year. Um, I liked going to all the little flock events and one of my favorite ones was um, pumpkin painting um, for Halloween. So I made a little like Harry Potter pumpkin and got to meet a bunch of new people on a different floor. So it was really great. Great. Thanks, Mackenzie. So uh, like I said, I don't see any more questions in the chat. If you do have questions that pop up, feel free to email us at honors at colorado.edu or the college at colorado.edu. Um, we do have admitted students day on Saturday, so please feel free to register for that event. You'll have a chance to talk to um, the specific department or major you, you plan on pursuing. And then um, housing will be there, fraternity and sorority life, a lot of good resources on campus. So Paul, if you just wanna close this out. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, so I'll hang around for a couple of minutes until actually at five uh, to answer any questions people have, but I um, uh, really appreciate you coming and hearing about honors. Uh, so uh, we really want you to come to see you and uh, the honors program and the honors residential academic program and all of the other programs on campus uh, are here for to give you help you with your success at CU. So uh, if you were admitted into CU, you have everything you have uh, that you need in order to be successful here. And it's our job to help you do that.